Hello, good evening, everybody. How are you today? Hello to Claudia Hueso, Yanari good Cortez. Evening. Good evening, Victor Martinez, Nicole, Ramiro, Vicky. I know that Nicole is Morenita. <laughs> <laughs> Vladimir, I know Morenita. <laughs> Vladimir, Adonai, and Miguel Lara. Thank you so much for being here, my dear participants. So uh, today is our last day of the week. Um, so we are very happy that uh, this week we are going to conclude the section number three. And we expect that we are going to be able to talk a little bit about the final, the midterm exam. Remember that we have to finish this week the, with the midterm exam at the end of section number three. And then for next week, we are going to start the section four. And then last week, the section five and the um, final exam. So I'm going to share with you what do I have tonight to share if, in order that you can see which part of the platform we are going to work. So I just would like to confirm, can you watch my screen, my dears? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Perfect, okay, yes. so uh, for tonight, we are going to work on the 3.8 lesson objective that says by the end of this class, you will learn placements of adjectives. Particularly, you will learn be plus adjective and adjective plus noun. So we are going to learn the structure on how to use adjectives because it's a little bit different from Spanish. We are going to review all the adjectives content. We are going to have some examples. We are going to do some exercises. And then uh, I hope that we can complete this topic. Uh, this topic includes that you have to go to the platform and watch the 3.9 video that says placement of adjectives, right? Uh, so the idea is that you can go, you can watch, you can repeat the new words, that you can um, practice the vocabulary. And then we are going to conclude with a 3.10 knowledge check. So I'm going to come back later to this knowledge check. And um, later uh, in the platform, you have the 3.11, which is a lesson objective, where you develop a uh, prediction and inferencing skills after reading and discussing an article on job profiles. So this is uh, about job profiles, our last class. So this is going to be easy for you. You just need to read the profiles. Uh, the, the first profile is about Lisa Parker. So you need to read what Lisa Parker do, uh, does in this case and what and where uh, she works and what she she does normally, right? And then you have um, John Blue, uh, he is a video gamer. And then we are going to talk about Becky uh, Peak, who is a dog walker. And then we have a Carlos Ruiz, who is a teacher. Uh, so, uh, it says uh, here we have then after this we will have the knowledge check of this session that we will go later then you have an audio for you to complete uh, let's see yes then you have an audio and then uh, you have to complete this part oh excuse me this is the midterm so here we are now in the midterm so we are going to come back later to the midterm so I'm going to start I'm going to stop sharing and I want you to see the class presentation that I have for you. And I would like that you can confirm that you're now watching my new screen that says adjectives word order. Can you watch it? Yes, teacher. Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect, excellent. So the topic is adjectives. We are going to study, as I said before, not only adjectives, but also the order of those in a sentence. And then we are going to have some practice. Basically, I want you to remember what an adjective is. And in here, the definition we have, it says that an adjective is a word which describes or gives more information about a noun or pronoun, right? So for example, you say, beautiful flower, big house, Normally, in Spanish, we say flor bonita, right? We say first the noun and then we say the adjective. But in English, it's different. You say first the adjective and then you say the noun. You say beautiful flower, big house. 
Then uh, the adjective definition is that an adjective uh, gives more information about a noun or a pronoun by answering one of these questions. What kind? When you say what kind, you can talk about the physical characteristics of that noun. For example, blue car. So you're describing the color of the surface of that object. Long rope. Right, so you're discussing or you're describing the length of the rope. Tall person, you're talking about the height of that person. Big house, you're talking about the size of that house. So blue, long, tall, and big, all of them are adjectives in this case. So adjectives also help us to say uh, which one. For example, these, these, which are demonstratives that you already know, uh, let me tell you that they are also adjectives when they are modifying a noun. When you say this town, you're using the word this as an adjective. Last week, it's an adjective last. The second day, the ordinal numbers can be also adjectives. The second day, the other woman, so all of the, Red words here are adjectives. This, last, second, other. Also, a, an adjective help us to say how many, so you can count. So numbers can be adjectives also. For example, you say one second, three boys, few cars, several people. So one, three, few, and several are adjectives. So. I want you to pay attention here because this is a very key um, slide because it's, it teaches us that an adjective, it, again, is a word that describes something, that an adjective gives us more information about a personal thing, but also that you have two ways of writing an adjective in a sentence. You can use the verb to be at the beginning uh, of the sentence. First, of course, there is the, the subject pronoun, then the verb to be plus the adjective. For example, he is tall. In this case, I'm using the structure be plus adjective. He is tall. So I'm using the verb to be for the subject pronoun that I'm, that I'm uh, talking about. She is. She is happy. In this case, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to drink a little bit water, okay, she's happy. In this case, I'm talking about she, so I write, I write first the subject pronoun, then the verb be, and then the word happy. Then uh, we have adjective, uh, the other, the other um, structure is adjective plus noun. In this case, you are not using the verb to be. In this case, you only place, um, the adjective first and then the noun, as I was saying before. For example, slow car. In this case, slow is an adjective. Car is the noun. Brown hat. Brown is the adjective and hat is a noun. All brown hat. In this case, I'm using two adjectives to describe the same hat. I say that this is, this is an old, but also color brown hat. Uh, I'm going to teach you later uh, how is the order that you need to follow and why here it says that it's incorrect to say brown old, right? So uh, keep, it in, keep it in mind because I'm going to come back to this part later in the presentation. Okay, here. Uh, I have a, a, an exercise for you here in order that we can find the adjectives. So it says, can you identify the adjectives in the paragraph below? Circle all the adjectives you can find. So I have here the example. The big blue spaceship zoomed into the sky. The, the flames were hot and bright and everyone was happy. So I'm going to read the paragraph and I will need volunteers that can tell me which do you think are adjectives in these paragraphs? So I'm going to start reading. For dinner, my mom is cooking pizza. I'm watching her, I'm watching her while she makes it. 
Her small hands pick up the big bag of flour and she tips it, and she tips it into the red bowl. She mixes in some warm water, a pinch of white salt and a pocket and a pocket of yeast. I watch as she mixes the sticky dough together and then kneads, kneads it on the clean table top. Next, she shapes the dough into a big circle and spreads on the fresh red tomato sauce. I ask if I can help and she lets me sprinkle on the dry herbs from the tiny jars. His job is fun. Finally, we add some gooey mozzarella and my mom slides the pizza into a hot oven. I can't wait to eat it. So who can find some uh, adjectives? Let's see, let's see. Mm -hmm. One volunteer to say at least one. It's my small um, hands. Yeah, I'm going to change into the, the small view and I will try to yeah. small. to design a line in order that we can use it for the work. Bien vino, right? bien vino. So let me put this here and then just wait a minute for me because I'm trying to design the line we are going to use for a, so let me try to draw it in a very nice way because we are going to continue using it. So thank you for being patient with me. So I um, need to, this is red and then I have a little bit like this, okay, small. Uh, can you identify another one? Big, big bag. Aha, uh -huh. big. So big is describing the word bag, big bag. Okay, very good. So big is an adjective. So we say small is an adjective, right? So um, let's red see. Red, uh -huh. red. red. So let me copy and paste. Okay, red, red, because red is modifying the word bow, bow, right? Let's see. Bow. Oops, it's moving around. Okay, it's going to be okay that way. Okay, uh, what, uh, what else? Do you have any other word? Warn. Warn. Aha, uh -huh, let me see. Warm. Yeah, warm is an adjective, that's right. Right. White. White. White, it's a color, White. so it's an adjective too. Yes, that's right. Right. Okay, let's see what else. Watch. Watch. Mix it, mix it, stick it. Sticky. Uh, sticky. Sticky, yes, but watch, no, because watch is a verb. So sticky. Okay. Yes, um, sticky, and yes. Mixes, uh, mixes mm, no. no, mixes no. Is, is a verb. So it, it says mixes because I'm talking about she. So it's third person. Aha, no. uh -huh. okay. third person, simple present. Aha, uh -huh. let's see what else. Clean. 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 Clean, yes, yes, clean is an adjective, so we can, uh, we can put it, the, the, the un, we can underline it. Aha, uh -huh. and then. Big, 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 big circle, big. yes, big is the word, fresh. that's right. Who said fresh? Fresh. Fresh. Red. Yes. Fresh. 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 Yes. fresh and red. So I'm going yes. to underline two here, right? So let me move That's this for red. Yes. Tomato That's sauce. I ask if I can help. I ask, in this case, ask no because it's the verb. Mm -hmm. Yo pregunto. Mm -hmm. So it's a verb. So maybe you can find another? Try it. Yeah. Dried. dried, yes, dried. dried herbs, in this case, yes, because some this, uh, this is uh, right. an adjective, even though it can be the past of a verb, but in this case, it's an adjective. 
Um, okay, let me see. Tiny. Tiny, tiny jar. So tiny, the word tiny is describing the word jar, the noun jar. Okay, it's this fun. job is fun. Yes, that's right, the, right. The word fun is an adjective also. Fun, and some. Mm. <laughs> I think that maybe this. Yo. Uy, mozzarella. Mm -hmm. And my mom slides the hot. pizza into the hot. Yes. Hot. Hot. Yes. How hot, hot hot oven. So the word is here. And I can't wait to eat it. Very good. You did a great job. Congratulations. This club is for you because you did a great job uh, finding the adjectives that describe all the nouns that appear in this reading. So that's precisely the first exercise in order that we can go deep into this class because I'm going to teach you not only what an adjective is and how to identify them, but also how to write the order of the adjectives. So thank you very much and congratulations. Now, let me go to the next part. In this case, um, we are going to talk about adjectives for, for people. So you know that for describing people, we normally talk about the appearance of people. We talk about the face characteristics. We talk about this, the hair characteristics. We talk about the clothing uh, sometimes. But in this case, I just wanted to talk about some adjectives for, for people that are not so common because describe most personality. So we say amusing, angry, amusing. athletic, attractive, beautiful, boring, brave, careful, careless, charming, clever, confident, crafty, crazy, creative, cruel, cute, dangerous, dependable, easygoing, energetic, exciting, famous, forgetful, Friendly, good looking, graceful, happy, helpful, horrible, humble, humorous, incon inconsiderate, interesting, likable, lucky, middle class, old, outgoing, overweight, poor, popular, practical, responsible, rich. Oops, excuse me, I moved. I'm sorry. And then the last column says romantic, sad, selfish, skinny, stingy, successful, talkative, thin, touchy, ugly, unlucky, wealthy, young. So because of the time, we are not going to define all the meanings of these words. But since you are going to receive this extra material, what I want to recommend you is to go and look for the new meanings the meanings that you don't know, the new words into, in a dictionary, and then you will include these new words into your own vocabulary. So that's the idea that you can grow knowing more vocabulary and that you can know, in this case, more adjectives for describing people. Okay, and the other important part of this class is that you need to know that adjectives have a specific order when you are going to write a sentence. For example, the first thing that you have to mention when you have a list of adjectives that you want to say of a noun, first you have to say opinion. In the opinion, you can say delicious, lovely, nice, cool. It has to do with, with the attitude you have towards the noun or the object uh, from your observation, right? So you can say, this, is, this looks a delicious cake or this is a delicious cake, right? Uh, lovely, nice, and cool. Uh, then you say the size. The, when you, we say the size, we talk about, of course, the size, but also the height. And you say big, small, big, small tall, huge, huge, tiny. After saying size, you say the shape. When we say the shape, we talk about shape, weight, and length round, square, 
long and fat. After shape, you mentioned condition. In, con in condition, we talk about condition, but also state. Clean, wet, rich, hungry. Age. Yes. In the age, we talk about how old is it? Old, young, new, antique. Okay. Then it continues the color. Remember that the color is a little bit easy because all that you need to know is the color. So you can say green, blue, reddish, purple, and so on, many colors we have. Then you talk about the pattern. And the pattern is sometimes the design or the pattern of the object. You can say spotted, con puntito, verdad, lunares, checked, con chequecitos, flowery, floreado, zigzag, like this. Later, you talk about the origin. You say American, British, Arabic, Turkish. Then you talk about material gold, wooden, plastic, synthetic. And finally, you say the purpose. When you say the purpose, you ask, what is it used for? And then you say for gardening, for shopping, for reading, for traveling, for whatever. What's the purpose of the noun you're talking about? So in this slide at the end, it says, before adjectives plus noun, we normally have a determiner. What's the determiner? A, on, the my, your, her, for, these, those, some, etc. So, I have this chart that I think that it's a little bit easy to remember. You can have the determiner here, a, uh, and for, her, our, those, that, several. And then you start with the observation, physical description. In physical description, we have size, shape, age, and color. And then you have the origin, later you have the material, then in the qualifier, and finally the noun. For example, here, look, I'm trying to tell you this example. A beautiful, old, dark Italian touring car. Look, I have one, two, three, four, five adjectives for describing this car, but I have to respect the order. First, I start, I start saying, the observation adjective, then I go to the description adjectives that can be size, shape, age, and color. Then I go to origin and then material and then uh, a qualifier or a purpose, right? Or what for? Then I say an expensive antique silver mirror. Yeah. Four George's long steam red silk roses. Hair, short black hair. I'm describing the hair, but look, all the adjectives, short and black, too, right? Our big old English sheepdog. The, I mean, those square wooden hat boxes. That dilapidated little hunting cabin. Several enormous young American basketball players. So I have one, two, three, four adjectives for the players some delicious Thai food, okay? So this is a very useful chart. So I will invite you to please take a picture. Le voy a invitar a que tomen una imagen de esta, este cuadrito porque lo vamos a utilizar para un pequeño ejercicio que vamos a hacer. So just let me take a picture and I'll send, send it to you. Okay, later. Uh, in here, I just have some sentences for you to see how is the adjective plus noun when I use more than one. So just let me send you. Just wait a minute for me, because I'm sending you the picture that we are going to use to classify the, the order of adjectives. Okay, here I have the big old white wooden house. Look, I'm using big old white. The expensive, thank you, that's, a, that's, that's much better. Thank you very much. Okay, um, the expensive small blue pants. I'm, I'm using three, expensive small blue pants. The cheap large red shirt. The new red American car. 
The comfortable big brown Italian sofa. The dangerous big black pitbull dog. The expensive silver and black Korean bike. The expensive new comfortable Italian shoes. The ugly fast silver motorcycle. The nice beautiful antique picture of me. <laughs> so it's a lot of um, adjectives that we have used to describe different nouns. So what we are going to do now is to talk about a person. We are going to describe our best friend or a partner using adjectives. And you can use both ways. For example, I can use the, the way um, with the verb to be or the way adjective plus noun. For example, I can say, she's my friend Anna, she's intelligent. When I say she's intelligent, I'm using the B plus adjective and hardworking. She's always happy and smiles a lot. I feel very comfortable with my friend Anna. So my question is, could you describe your friend? So I'm going to send you this picture where I have some like most common adjectives for describing people or the character of a person or the personality attentive, calm, cheeky, intelligent, faithful, pessimistic, friendly, good-tempered, happy, hardworking, honest, nervous, humble, uh, lively, obedient, optimist. So uh, I would like to know if you have a question about this. Tenemos preguntas. Aquí todavía no estamos trabajando tanto el orden, ¿verdad? Sino que estamos trabajando un poco más eh, El uso de los adjetivos. If you can take a picture of this, it's going to be great. I'm going to send you now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, do you have questions so far? ¿Tenemos preguntas hasta acá? No? No, teacher. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and I will ask you to please go to the breakout room. I'm going to invite you now. Uh, and and I, I expect that you can join when you receive the invitation and that you work in the trios trying to describe your best friend. It doesn't need to be a very long description, description of your friend, but I need that you can mention at least, at least four adjectives. If you can mention five, it's going to be great. Okay, so but at least four adjectives for describing your best friend or your mom, or your dad, or your husband, or whoever you want to describe. Okay, so let me create the sessions. And please start joining. Joao, my dear, do you have a problem by joining the group? Can you hear me? Okay, okay, Joao. Don't worry, you can you can work by yourself here in the in the in the main room, but I need to move around the groups in order to see what they are doing, that they are working, and if in and if they have questions, so uh, I'm going to come back. Um, no, say she's my friend Anna. Is a, she's an intelligent and hard working. No sé cómo quiere que la hagamos ahí. Hello, my dears. Uh, can you tell me the name of a friend? ¿Alguien de ustedes me puede decir el nombre de un amigo o amiga? ¿De ustedes? Eh, Mario, por ejemplo. Ok, Mario, ok. Eh, en español, ¿cómo me puede describir a Mario con cuatro adjetivos? 
Vale, Mario es alto, he's tall, bueno, uh -huh. no, small, eh, uh -huh. no. Short, en este eh, caso es short. Ver. Cuando es una persona en la estatura es eh, tall and short. Ok. So Mario is es short. Eh, es alegre. Happy, a very happy person or a happy person. Eh, también es... Pero características personales son en todo caso, ¿verdad, teacher? Yes, you can, you can add es physical, delgado. you can add physical, but also you can say, for example, um, es, delgado, es delgado. Uh -huh. You can say skin, skinny, skin. skinny person, skinny, uh -huh. skinny person, uh -huh. and very friendly. Because if you say he's happy, maybe he's friendly, right? Uh -huh. So, and that's it. So you say, eh, my friend Mario is a very short, is a short person. Um, you can say both. Is a short and, and, skin, and a skinny person. Eh, or a thin, ¿verdad? Delgado, thin. A thin person. Mm. And also he is very happy and friendly. And that's it. Okay. Okay. Do you have extra questions? No, teacher. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay, Thank excellent. You. Thank you. I'll come back later, okay? See you in, in a couple of yeah. minutes. Hello, Carlita. Good evening. Can you hear me? Hello, Carlita. Can you hear me, my dear? Hola. Hello, Carlita. Hola. Um, You're, you're start, uh, you have started recently in the class? Casi no le escucho. Recién, recién ha ingresado, Carlita? Sí, ahorita acabo de ingresar. Ok, Carlita. Bueno, mire, está bien, no se preocupe. Mire, fíjese que estamos trabajando en grupo. Estamos uh -huh. tratando de describir a nuestro, a one of our best friends, a uno de nuestros mejores amigos, o somebody uh, from your family, right? Alguien de su familia. So you need to use like four adjectives. Tiene que utilizar cuatro adjetivos para describirlo. I send to the WhatsApp a picture. Les envío al WhatsApp una imagen que les sirve de guía. So, would you like to go to a group? ¿Le gustaría que la una a alguno de los grupos? Todavía tenemos unos minutos. O no sé si prefiere quedarse en el salón y tratar de armarlo usted solita mientras yo hago la ronda con los equipos. Yo me ¿Perdón? Yo me espero, es que casi no la escuché, fíjese. Ok, está bien. Entonces, eh, vea el WhatsApp y Ajá. trate de seguir la, la, la actividad que está en la imagen, de describir okay. a alguien con cuatro adjetivos, four adjectives. Ok, perfecto. I'll come back in a minute, ok? Regreso Gracias. un minutito. Ok, okay excelente. Nervioso, he's always attentive. Uh, es, bien, es bien atento. Atentis, como que si estuviera Atentive. atento. Como, ah, que... lo, como, como a lo que uno le dice, tal vez. Digo yo. No, my dear, do you have a question? Tenemos preguntas, chicos. I'm here to help you, just in case. Eh, una, una consulta, teacher. En este Adelante. caso, nosotros, nosotros queremos poner que la persona a la que estamos describiendo es como atento. Sería el verbo que está aquí, attentive. Eh, a ver, ¿dónde está? Yes. Ajá, es, como, yes. ajá, es como que digamos, él es bien atento con las personas. Marie. Ah, pero cuando hablamos de atento es kind, amable. Kind. kind. Ah, okay. Ajá, se escribe okay. K-I-N-D, kind. He's kind. a very, ah, very kind person, porque no es tanto atento de que ponga atención, sino de que él es... Es como amable. Trata bien a las personas, es hospitalario. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Yes. Thank you, teacher. Ok, excelente. ¿Tienes you have extra questions? Eh, no. en, bueno, por lo menos no, no, teacher, yo no. Ok, perfecto. So I'm going to give you three more minutes in order that you can practice. Eh, and then eh, we go back to the main room, ok? Ok, teacher. Ok, okay. see you in a minute. Bye. Dando. 
que si es primera vez que está en el módulo, no, pero no, ella ya ha estado, estuvo, estuvimos juntas en el, en el módulo 1. Sí. No es que yo ahorita no entendía de que después de esta tercera íbamos a tener una evaluación. La, la, que, la intermedia, pero no. Pero es la de la plataforma. Sí, es, sí, es. Yes. Ok. Uh -huh. Hello, my dears. Uh, may I help you? Do you have questions or doubts uh, about the exercise or something else? Yeah. Like, yeah? We are uh, describe. Um, I am describing my daughter mm -hmm. uh, and and I and and me. Your daughter uh, is yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, uh, and Miguel too and Vicky. Okay, excellent, excellent. So I'll give you two more minutes in order that you can finish the activity and then we will go back to the main room in order to share uh, with the rest of the class, okay? Okay. Okay, see you in a minute. La traduzco casi igual. Hi, teachers. Hello, hello. Is everything okay here? May I help you? Teacher is blessed. Uh, which are you watching? ¿Cuál está mirando? Uh, no, no, no. Es, eh, se escribe blessed. Como blessed. Pero se dice blessed. Una T al final. I'm blessed. blessed. Okay. Or I feel blessed. blessed. I feel ah. blessed. Okay. Blessed. I feel blessed. blessed. Es como blessed. una D al final. Blessed. blessed. No, la, blessed. E, la E no suena. No, no blessed, sino blessed. 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 Ok. Excellent. Yeah. Do you have an extra question? No? No. Ok, no. perfect. I'll call you in a minute. Ok. See you in the okay. plenary. Ok, teacher. Hello, hello, my dears. How is it going? ¿Cómo van? Hi, teacher. Hi. Nos, ya describimos. Okay, excellent. So, uh, we are going to go back to the session in a minute and then we are going to share with the rest of the class. I just want uh, to know, do you have extra questions or no? Is everything okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. See you in a minute, okay? Okay, teacher. Okay, bye. Bye. Hello, hello, welcome back. Who was the practice? Okay, okay, nice. Okay, uh, welcome back, my dear. So I would like to know who wants to start sharing. I need that at least um, each one, at least one person of, of each group can share one description. So you decide who wants to. Vamos a necesitar que al menos una persona del, de los grupos pueda compartir su descripción. Tal vez no vamos a lograr que los tres del grupo hablen, pero por lo menos uno, ¿verdad? Entonces, who wants to start? Ajá. Mi teacher. Ok, Raquelita, go ahead. Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> They are very shy tonight. <laughs> ok, he is my son, Jared. Mm -hmm. He is always happy and obedient. He mm -hmm. makes me happy. I feel blessed to have him in my life. 
Oh, cute, so beautiful. Okay, <laughs> excellent, Raquelita. Congratulations, you did a nice description. Okay, who wants to continue? Hi. Okay, please, Morenita. She's, she's my daughter, Nicole. She's uh, smart, friendly, and intelligent. Uh, she works in 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 presa repuestos. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Ah, <laughs> cute. She's so beautiful also. She's so beautiful. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, next volunteer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Morenita. Aha, uh -huh, my dears. Who wants to continue? Let's see, let's see. My dear boys, I tengo un boy. Okay, Luis, Luisito. <laughs> hey, teacher. Uh, he is my friend, Nestor. Mm -hmm. He's uh, intelligent and crazy mm -hmm. and working. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, usually hungry. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he um, is... I have very nice uh, friend. O cómo sería decir eh, una bonita amistad? Eh, we have a very nice friendship. French, okay. We have Tenemos una nice bonita friendship. amistad. We have a very yes. nice friendship. Okay, excellent. Very good. Okay, next volunteer. Yo, me. Excellent. ¿Quién dijo yo y quién dijo mi? Me, Tengo me. a Abdul. <laughs> Abdul y luego creo que a, a alguien más. O okay, Abdul. Okay. Okay. He is my friend Mario. Mm -hmm. He is tall and happy person. Mm -hmm. He is uh, he is friendly and tiny. Tiny. Ah, uh, tiny. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent, Abdul. Thank you very much. Okay, who said me? ¿Quién dijo me? Por ahí escuché a un caballero Victor. que dijo. Victor, adelante, Victor. He is my friend Pedro. Mm -hmm. He is a very honest and friendly. He's always a very kind person and has worked all the time. Excellent. I feel happy and positive with my friend Pedro. Excellent, very good. So Peter is a very good influence to you. Excellent. Uh, who else, who wants to continue? Another volunteer? Let's see, let's see. Yeah. Who said yo? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Vladi, adelante Vladimir. Um, she is my friend Monica. Mm -hmm. She she is a very honest always always she, are, always All, always she, always always. Mm -hmm. always. She, she is very always and um, she is always happy and smiling a lot. I mm -hmm. feel very comfortable with my friend Monica. Excellent, very good, nice description. Okay, who else? Who wants to continue? Do we have another volunteer? Okay, thank you very much, my dear participants, for the effort you did in order to describe the characteristics of personality of some of your friends. I appreciate that. And because of the time, I'm going to continue because we need to explore also the midterm exam. And I just want to show you this slide that says, uh, let's see. Uh, this is when you're writing adjectives before nouns. You say the beautiful house. That's the correct way. You never say the house beautiful unless you say the house is beautiful. Only in this case, but in that case, it's not adjective before noun. In that case, is using the verb to be. The house is beautiful. That's correct but you don't say the house beautiful. No, you say the beautiful house. Or you say the expensive car. You don't say the car expensive, unless you say the car is expensive. Okay, uh, in, the, in the material you will receive, you have this exercise yeah. that says, excuse me? Teacher, I uh, have a question. Tell me. Yeah. I'm gonna try saying English. Okay, please do it. Um, the 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 word is uh, is used uh, when we we are um, mm -hmm. 
Estamos afirmando algo. Yes, uh, when when you're yes, is it when you're affirming something in the simple present. For example, like this. The house I'm going to do it. The house is beautiful. Beautiful. It's an affirmative sentence. It's an affirmative sentence. And I'm using the adjective and it's okay because I'm using the verb be, right? So mm -hmm. the sentence is correct, right? So let me copy and do the same for the car. Okay, let me see. The car, in this case, the car is expensive, okay? Okay, when, when we talk about adjectives, uh, we have the formula adjectives before nouns. In this case, here is the adjective and then is the noun. That's why you say before, because the adjective is before the noun house. The mm -hmm. adjective expensive is before the noun car. So uh, if you say in the other way, that's incorrect, unless Teacher. you add the verb to be. For example, Teacher. the house, yeah. Teacher. We can have, we can say anything. No, no pueden ver nada. No. Perdón. Ahorita creo que cuando lo edité me, me. Okay. Aquí está. Can you watch it now? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Sure. What I was saying. Thank you. Thank you very much. What I was saying is that this way is adjectives before nouns. You say the beautiful house, and that's correct. But you cannot say the, the say the house beautiful unless you use the other way that is a uh, adjective plus b i mean a noun plus b plus adjective which is the other form right vamos a decirlo en español para que quede como bien clarito eh, hay dos maneras de utilizar los adjetivos una es colocar el adjetivo antes del nombre o sustantivo como lo tenemos en el lado izquierdo para mí que dice the beautiful house esa es la forma correcta Es incorrecto decir the house beautiful. No, eh, en español así hablamos, ¿verdad? Ponemos primero el noun y después el adjetivo, pero en inglés no. Entonces, en inglés, la única manera de hacerlo así es necesariamente utilizando el verb to be. Esta es la otra estructura. Cuando yo digo the house, ahí sí va primero el noun, pero tiene que llevar un verbo to be que diga es o está, que describa, ¿verdad? The house is beautiful. La casa es hermosa. Ahí sí está correcta, ¿verdad? Es, ahí sí no hay ningún problema, pero estamos usando el verb to be. Eh, yo digo the car, the expensive car. That's right. But I cannot say the car expensive because it's incorrect. In that case, I, I have to use the verb to be and say the car is expensive. Eh, I don't know if is it clear now. No sé si están claros. Sí, sí, sí. Ok, my dears. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. So, in the material you will receive, but because of the time I won't be able to, to solve this exercise here in class, but you will receive the material and you have here, for example, we are going to describe some shoes, right? So you have three adjectives, for example, here. Blue, clumsy, Danish. Cloth. So according to the chart that I send you to the WhatsApp group and that this is going to be in this material also, you need to put in order all these three adjectives in order to properly describe the, the clocks. Then you have metallic, slick, pretty boots. You need to look the right order of the adjective according to origin and all the list that I gave you, right? But this is going to be at home because by now I don't have more time in order to continue here. In the material, you will find also this exercise that has uh, 10 uh, sentences that you need to complete by writing the right adjective for each one. So I'm going to stop sharing this and I'm going to go with the uh, platform again because I want you to, um, look for the midterm exam, right? Uh, so, uh, this is the placement of adjectives, as I said before. So, um, 
in this case, in the knowledge check 3.10, I'm just going to show you in a fast way, okay? In the job profiles, you have to read it, but the person that says, after I win, I take a break, according to it's understood, um, it's John Blue, okay? So let me, okay. I don't usually work in the summer. Who said that? Carlos Ruiz. The restaurant closes late around 2 a.m. Who said that? Lisa Parker. After work, my feet and my arms are tied. Who said that? Becky Peck. Okay, the other one has to do with, uh, you have to listen to a conversation and select the right answer. So in this case, you have to look that says there are bedrooms. So according to the conversation, the best answer is three. There are some chairs in the dining room, no. Kitchen, no. Living room, according to what you hear in the audio. Julia needs a refrigerator, stove, or microwave oven for the kitchen. According to the conversation, the best answer is microwave oven, okay? Uh, so, this is the, um, the reading, right? Um, so, th this that I was reading about there is and there are is uh, the first part of your midterm exam. Then you have to complete a conversation. In this case, uh, what we are evaluating is a simple present of verbs, right? And then in this case, you need to find the best parts that complete the sentence. For example, you see here that we are talking about the apartment, right? Your apartment. So when we talk about the apartment, is it. So we need to use does. And then, since we use the auxiliary does, it means that the main verb goes as it is. So we say, does your apartment have an elevator? So um, here you have, a, you need to continue with the logic that we are talking about the apartment. So yes, it is, yes, it does. But later we change a conversation. And then we are not talking uh, of the apartment anymore, and we are talking about the bedrooms. So you need to be very careful because in that case, the bedrooms are they. So we use the auxiliary do and the verb have, right? So you need, in this uh, kind of exercises, you need to be very careful when one conversation finishes and, one, and when the other starts in order to see who is the subject of the conversation in order to write in the best way. So here, there is the complexion part. Uh, in this case, we are evaluating there is and there are, right? So you, you can, uh, you have to put in order the sentence that says there, there isn't a mirror in bedroom. So the right structure is there isn't, because we have a negative here, there isn't, a mirror in the bedroom. And you can use it, you can do it using a contraction or you can use um, uh, only, uh, only uh, small letters or you can use capital letters, you can use a dot or you cannot use a dot. Okay, so in this case, what we are evaluating is there is and there are. Uh, in, the, in the next, we are talking about uh, the professions, right? So in this case, you need to find the profession. For example, a nurse works in a hospital. A receptionist talks to people at hotel. A judge sits all day. And the letter E, you have to select the questions to complete the conversation. In this case, you already have the, the answer there. But uh, you need... Um, So just, okay, so let me say, okay, excuse me. 
Select the questions to complete the conversation. In this case, you have to look for the example. Uh, the question, the, the answer is already given. I work at a restaurant. So what could be the best question here using the WH? How they like their jobs? No, it doesn't make sense. What does he do? No. Where do you work? Because the, is the, best, the best question that fits for the answer, I work at a restaurant. In the next, he's a firefighter. So which could be the answer that best uh, matches to this question? What does he do, right? What does he do? Number three, the answer says they hate their jobs. Oh, wow. So the best question is, where do you work? No. What does he do? No. How do they like their jobs? That's the best question that matches with the answer. For the letter F, uh, the instruction is that you have to complete the conversations uh, using the verb to be, right? Or the verb have in each case. So, a singer uh, has an exciting job. You have to look for the possibilities because you cannot say a singer have because uh, we are talking about a third person. So the right is has. But the second one is not the best because it says has a exciting. And that's not the right answer because you have to put an N when the next mm -hmm. word starts with a vowel. Uh, I disagree. I think a, a singer's job is boring or is not boring. So you have to, to follow the logic of the conversation because if the fir fir first person says that has an exciting, and the other person, uh, it says, it's, I disagree. It means that it's on the contrary, so it's boring. Then you look that it changes the conversation and then they continue talking about a flight attendant. So you need to be careful on the changes of the conversation. And that's it, we're finished the midterm exam. Do you have questions? Tenemos preguntas? En realidad el midterm exam no es una cosa difícil, ¿verdad? Sino que eh, eh, es más que todo seguir la lógica, ¿verdad? Y ver lo que nos están evaluando. No sé si hay alguien que tiene preguntas al respecto. En este caso sería como, teacher, el examen que, que nos van a hacer todo lo que hemos visto, ¿verdad? En la plataforma. Sí, es un resumen. Si usted se fija, uh -huh. es un resumen de todo lo que hemos visto y está en la plataforma. Ahora, lo que sí quiero pedirles encarecidamente es que tratemos de terminar esto el fin de semana. Okay. Es decir, para el fin de semana, eh, lo digo en español para que no nos quede duda, para el fin de semana sí yo esperaría que todos estemos en la misma página en el sentido que hayamos terminado todos los, los knowledge checks hasta toda, a cubrir toda la sección 3, incluyendo el midterm exam. De manera que el próximo lunes todo ya vamos a estar en la sección 4, ¿verdad? La sección 4 sí. y, because we only have two more weeks, solo tenemos dos semanas más, entonces the, the next week is going to be section 4, and the sí. last week, section 5. Sí, lo que estaba también observando uh -huh. ahí es que nada más como que varían, pero son las mismas respuestas en, la, en las cosas. Exactamente. Ajá, solo nada más, ajá, solo o sea, es de fijarse nada más cuál es la que pega y de ahí son como las mismas, las mismas opciones múltiples que ponen. Exacto, es de seguir la lógica de las estructuras, ¿verdad? Eh, ¿Cuál es más apropiada? But again, if you have any question, please feel free to contact me even during the weekend. De nuevo, ¿verdad? Si usted tiene dudas o hay un ejercicio en el que no logra completarlo, usted me puede eh, contactar durante el fin de semana o puede sentirse libre también de eh, preguntarlo en el grupo. Mañana no hay clase, dicho. Mañana no, mis estimados, porque ya repusimos la, la parte que, que se nos había quedado de la sesión anterior. Entonces, mañana you're free. Mañana están libres, así que pueden avanzar perfectamente con esto si quieren dejar, digamos, su sábado y su domingo eh, sin mayor compromiso con, con sus estudios. Ok. Ok, my dears, perfect. It has been nice to have you here and I hope to see you on Monday. Please be safe and take care. Ok. Happy weekend. Bye bye.